Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. As Art and I get to talk to our fabulous love and relationship coach, Michelle Fabrica. Great to see you again, Michelle. Hi, John. Hi, Art. Good to see you both. Hi, Michelle. Uh, you know, I have a, a couple of days ago, I was uh, with somebody who was loading off on because I guess they felt they could on uh, their, I'll just say partner. It could be a spouse partner. I don't want to give that away. And quite frankly, um, it's not going to go anywhere. And I, I was neither sympathetic or I just listened because they apparently they had to vent. But uh, the truth of the matter is that it seems to me to be very dangerous. Uh, if they have a problem, they should either split with them or they should figure it out with them. Because quite frankly, what's going to happen is in many cases, especially if you're talking to somebody in the group, it's going to get back to them. If it gets back to them, I don't think there's any salvaging it about right. somebody hearing from a third party that you're complaining about them. What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, unfortunately, we humans um, tend to complain sometimes, right? Especially, you know, when we're having challenges and, you know, um, it, it might be something that, you know, can be helpful, right, to talk to another person about something, a challenge you're having with your partner, but um, obviously it can be problematic, just like you're saying. So I think one some of the things to keep in mind are, you know, first of all, are you really only sharing the negative things with someone? Because I think often we, you know, we don't remind our close confidant or whatever that like, you know, in the big picture, things are great, but I'm really having a challenge with this one thing. And so we give them a really lopsided view of the relationship and they think, wow, you know, things are not going well. And if we're willing to kind of like, overall things are really going well, except there's this one thing, um, you know, that can be more useful to kind of um, keep it uh, reined in in some way. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Michelle, I was with an uh, interesting uh, story, Art. I was with a couple that I knew for many years, and I don't know what the discussion was, but it, he did something and she rolled her eyes and uh, she said, I love this guy, but that drives me crazy. <laughs> You know, when he does whatever it is he did. In front of, yeah. She said that in front of him. Yes, in front well, of that's him. Okay. That's okay. That's, that's not behind your back. And I thought that was a great way to handle it. You know, obviously, they've had the discussion before, whatever his idiosyncrasy was that she didn't like. Um, yeah. But I thought that was a great way to handle it, is, in other words, express the love, but you're <laughs> still doing something that's really annoying, and you ought to cut it out. Yes, and I'd like to offer and in there. I really love him, and I find this really challenging when he does this because the but sometimes in a sentence can negate what was previously said. Uh, so I like that with a little tweak on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah, yeah. But another thing to keep in mind though is like, are you gossiping, and or are you really trying to get support? So, um, you know, sometimes we need to let off a little steam. There's something that's bothering us. We want to, you know, kind of just, um, you know, let go of something really. And so that's, that's different than gossiping when you're actually kind of making fun of the behavior or even maybe, you know, not really treating them with respect or reverence or love that I want to invite people to, re to treat everybody that way and especially their partners, right? So um, that's something to notice because I think that, Sometimes we get in the, um, you know, we're in a group and people start dishing about their partners, you know, especially, let's be honest, you know, women getting together, <laughs> let's put it that way, that can happen, right? Yeah. And, um, and it's just, it's important to, to not be in that mode of like, well, get a load of this, you know, and, uh, you know, air out some really dirty laundry that you might not want to be sharing. Yeah, I, I find it, um, quite frankly, a little unattractive. And we all do it once in a while usually with people we, we trust, you know, not to, to betray the confidence. But um, it is a little unattractive to hear somebody, as you said, airing dirty laundry about whether it's a, a close relationship like a spouse or whether it's a family thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's actually a really key point because often we think we're sharing something negative about them, but what we're really revealing even more of 
is something not so positive about ourselves <laughs> that we would choose to complain about them, you know, in this setting. And so we got to watch that. I mean, oftentimes this can happen even like in a dating situation where you hear someone complain about their former partner. You're kind of like, ooh, that doesn't really reflect well on the speaker, right? Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. I'm going I'm to yeah. jump back in with my two cents, two, two things. First of all, if you say something behind somebody's back, assume it's going to get back to that person, even if it's sure. a trusted friend, okay, because I may tell my trusted friend and it'll get back to them. And number two, to me, don't tell me your secrets because I don't, not that I don't care. I think much less of somebody who, who uh, disses on somebody behind their back. Uh, and if you have something, address it with that person or get professional help. I'm not professional help. Okay. So, uh, and if I could figure out how to build, build for it, maybe I would change my mind a little bit. But uh, <laughs> I think it's probably, I would say, if you have, don't have something nice to say about somebody and you say it behind their back, assume it's going to get back to them and it's not going to reflect well on you. But anyway, that's just me. Well, you yeah. know, the other side of it is that... Um, if you have somebody you trust, a, a confidant, and I know that women do this much more often than men do, um, it it's good to have somebody you can trust to share your feelings with. Um, and so, you know, but again, it has to be somebody you can trust, uh, trust so that it doesn't get back, it does, isn't told out of school. But it, it, I think it is important, and I think we all do it, and we all need it. We all need to be able to have somebody outside of the marriage, in this case, um, that we can mm -hmm. trust, that we can share with. It, it, I know women, I, I know this for a fact, women talk about their husbands all the time. And men rarely talk about their wives. But in my experience, it's been that um, if a husband talks about his wife it's often to, has this happened to you? I mean, the attitude is kind of seeking help. Whereas mm -hmm. I think women just tend to dish a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, my also, my, my problem with it is that uh, uh, if you t tell a trusted friend and you have one friend and you're just sharing that all the time and it sort of becomes your habit, who's not a professional uh, psychologist or something, then that's fine. But I also find that uh, in a lot of cases like that, you have to really be careful because you may be saying something to somebody to bounce it off them, get off, and they may be an enabler. They like you, so they're going to say, "Well, they're not going to question. Well, did you do this right? If they went to you, you would ask them that. Well, what about this? Yeah. And here's the other side of the story. But if you're telling it to a close friend, not only is there a chance it's going to get back and not reflect well on you, and and it'll probably make it worse to deal with your partner, but also. Um, it's just going to be a situation where, in most cases, they're going to say, "Well, I feel sorry for you, and I hope things get better." And you know, it's really too bad that uh, this is happening to you, as opposed to having some a qualified professional like you say, "Have you looked at the other side of it?" Because most of us don't do that. What we're trying to do is be a friend and yeah. and you know, put put your head on our shoulder. Well, anyway, mm. so if you don't have something nice to say about somebody, don't say it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think yeah, I have some. Um... Yeah, the perspective I want to bring and kind of leave us with really is that I think that obviously everybody has a different comfort level with sharing things mm -hmm. about our relationship outside the relationship. And so that's something to actually have a conversation with your partner about is like, you know, what level of confidentiality or privacy, secrecy, you know, do we have here and what are we each comfortable with? Because I do think there can be um, a danger in having really tight security around those things, because I think that can be sometimes a warning sign of an abusive relationship when you're not permitted to share with anybody else about what's going on. And so people hold it in a different way. And that's definitely a place to obviously, you know, get support from a counselor or coach, someone who can, you know, keep confidentiality and help you, help you sort it out without yeah. the repercussions of someone else learning about this situation that you maybe wish you hadn't shared or you know, down the road, it, like you said, it, it, it gets out. So I think it's it's kind of like a, a personal choice, but yeah, we just, I advise caution around that. Yeah. And um, and definitely just to really be respectful of your partner um, and, you know, to treat it, it's like, it's a behavioral 
thing that, you know, like we talk about kids, it's like, you know, comment on the behavior, not the person themselves. Mm -hmm. So we're not like tearing down the, the whole person. It's like, I didn't like it when they did this is different than they're a, you know, horrible person or whatever, you know, we criticize or have contempt because those, those feelings, you know, can really start to undermine a relationship. Mm. Yeah. I, I think I made a, a really good point and that is, when we do this, we have to ask ourselves, why are we sharing this information? Uh, you know, do we really want some assistance? Do we really want help? We just want a shoulder to cry on, or are we are we just bad mouthing? You know, mm -hmm. to get to get it out. We just yeah. want to complain, and it's that's not the forum for complaining. The well, forum for complaining is really talking to your loved one and sharing and solving the problem. Well, I want to leave this yeah. on a, a personal, uh, uh, a positive note by sharing with you, Michelle, if I could, that um, uh, I have the best partner, business partner in the world. And uh, <laughs> he's, he's absolutely wonderful. And, and thank you for letting where, me where, where, uh, share, share that, what? share oh. that with you. It's, it's just oh. to get it off my chest. Thank you. <laughs> nice. Oh, uh, Michelle, always a uh, good perspective. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.